Hi everyone, uh, this is Dr. Muhammad Afiz, uh, Department of Ophthalmology, Kim's Carver. Today we'll talk about something about the squint. Uh, to start with, we'll start the class uh, with uh, pseudo strabismus or pseudo squint. When there is actually there is no squint, patient appears to be having squint. And we'll discuss about uh, angle of uh, kappa also. What is angle kappa? Okay, let's start the class. What is pseudo it is it is an apparent it is an apparent squint actually there is no squint but it is an apparent squint the definition given is it is a clinical impression of ocular deviation when there is no squint present when there is no squint present but there is a uh, clinical impression of the squint for example if this is the eye in the primary gaze primary gaze the visual axis is parallel when you are uh, when your object of uh, interest is at the infinity and your visual axis almost appears parallel okay this is normal and also this this norm parallel visual axis is also present in pseudo strabismus case or pseudo squints case but for the outside viewers or the clinician clinician before examination it appears to have uh, he appears to have a squint apparent squint there is no actual squint the visual axis is parallel okay that is the definition given in the textbook it is divided into two types pseudo isotropia and pseudo exotropia what is pseudo isotropia it is nothing but uh, it is nothing but your apparent convergent squint understood Example being prominent epicanthal fold. I'll show you those pictures. And there is a negative. Uh, second example is negative angle kappa. We'll talk about what is angle kappa in the coming slides. And especially is this negative angle kappa is seen in high myopia. Normally the angle kappa is positive and it's very small. If there is a negative angle kappa, it appears to be pseudo isotropia. And uh, short IPD. The interpupillar distance is very short. In in such patients, the there appears to be a pseudo isotropia okay this is what i was talking about uh, uh, epicanthal fold see for example if you see a squint if this is the eye and this is the eye understood this is the normal eye for example this is the normal eye and uh, your nose is here this white sclera nasal white sclera is quite prominent in normal eye what happens in isotropia isotropia what happens this one one side the eye would have moved here in isotropia eye is normal here uh, one sided isotropia this apparent white sclera is not fully visible in isotropia in isotropia this is i am talking about true isotropia but similar apparent can be seen in pseudo uh, isotropia seen in uh, prominent epicanthal fold the, this epicanthal fold covers the normal white sclera of the nasal white sclera if this is no nose nasal white sclera it is covered by prominent epicanthal fold giving an appearance of giving an appearance of pseudo isotropia pseudo isotropia or convergent squint okay uh, this is to show the wide interpupillar distance seen in exotropia see the interpupillar distance pupil to pupil distance is increased that is seen in exotropia if the same is decreased interpupillar distance is decreased than the normal it will appear to be a pseudo isotropia understood uh, similar example only for example if this is the eye and if when the patient is having a isotropia the, the true isotropia I am talking true isotropia. This interpupillar distance is reduced. Similarly, if uh, naturally if a patient is having uh, even the eye is at a normal position, but interpupillar distance uh, is reduced, interpupillar distance is in some individuals, this appears to have an impression of isotropia. But this is a pseudo isotropia. Pseudo isotropia. Where there is no ocular deviation, but interpupillar distance is reduced. Okay. Now we'll see what is pseudo exotropia. 
is also known as apparent divergent squint it is an apparent squint not real squint seen in hypertelorism what is hypertelorism it is the wide separation of the two eyeball wide separation of wide separation of eyeballs hmm? wide separation of the eyeball is called as hypertelorism uh, in such conditions the ipd or the interpupillar distance will increase and also in positive angle large positive angles uh, kappa normally the angle kappa is positive only i'll show what is i'll tell you what is positive what is negative in case of large positive angle kappa that is seen in uh, retinopathy of prematurity conditions like retinopathy of prematurity the eye appear to be pseudo exotropia okay same uh, picture we'll see uh, forget about this this is in uh, same thing here see interpupillary distance has been increased that uh, that causes uh, simulating exotropia pseudo exotropia there is no apparent exotropia see, for example if this is the eye and patient is having an exotropia exotropia means eyeball is turned towards the temporally so interpupillary distance is increased in uh, true uh, exotropia but in conditions where no eyes are parallel the visual axis is parallel but the true interpupillary distance itself is increased than the normal the normal uh, variations in the eye so in few percentage of people might have so this will stimulate the exotropia but this is not the true exotropia but the pseudo exotropia okay now what we'll see what is an uh, angle kappa angle kappa angle kappa is the angle between anatomical axis anatomical axis and visual axis and visual axis anatomical axis sometimes replaced by pupillary axis is almost same one and the same because anatomical axis is very difficult to uh, measure pupillary axis is sometimes used what is anatomical axis now if you see this is the eyeball with the cornea anatomical axis is the center of the posterior pole the anat anatomical center of the posterior pole is passing through the center of the cornea this is the anatomical axis anatomical axis uh, this will be at the center of the cornea understood and uh, pupil will be most of the time uh, your fovea fovea will be temporal most of the normal condition fovea will be temporal what is visual axis we have studied in the previous uh, classes visual axis is nothing but line joining the pup uh, fovea to the object of interest your object of interest is here it is joining that this is the uh, this is your visual axis and this is the anatomical axis sometimes uh, the de definition of a kappa angle is they tell it as the angle between the pupillary axis and the visual axis pupillary axis is nothing but uh, uh, for example this is the eye and you have a pupil the center of the pupil a perpendicular line is drawn to the center of the cornea this is called as pupillary line or pupillary axis it almost corresponds to the anatomical axis uh, angle when the fovea lies temporal to the fovea lies temporal to the uh, anatomical axis that is your uh, uh, center of the anat anat anatomical center of the eyeball it is said to be positive angle understood it is normal normal condition normal angle negative uh, normal positive angle kappa is no, angle kappa it is around 5 degree if it is increases such as in case of uh, rop what uh, rop what happens is the fovea gets uh, there is a displacement of the fovea towards the temporal side so the fovea will be here so there will be a large angle kappa understood the angle kappa will be very large this is the eyeball and cornea and this is the anatomical axis and you were uh, this is the fovea Uh, th this is the normal fovea this will be the angle of axis but in case of uh, uh, in case of rop the fovea would have shifted away from the anatomical axis 
and giving a large positive angle kappa now what happens when you see from front what happens when you see from front is uh, if this is the cornea cornea and this is your pupil hmm? normally it will be almost at the center of the, this reflex will be at the center of the pupil light reflex will be at the center of the pupil when uh, when you ask you to ask, ask the patient to see the light reflex which is shown in the center of the pupil now what happens if the uh, fovea has been shifted more temporarily more temporarily the light would have shifted little bit nasal nasal understood nasal to the center of the this is the center through which the pupillary axis is coming and uh, or anatomical axis is coming and the light is that the visual axis is coming it would have center more nasal understood uh, more nasal uh, fovea will be at the temporal the light reflex will be at the nasal so this will stimulate an exotropia understood exotropia as we have seen here uh, pseudo exotropia you see in positive large large positive angle scotoma uh, angle kappa uh, we'll see in the picture here see this is the normal condition can see here uh, a cornea and there is a pupil and there is a light reflex there and here what happens uh, for instance, that is the uh, exotropia what happens uh, there is a pupil and it is the light has shifted towards the nasal light reflex has shifted here the white light reflex would have shifted towards the nasal it is a shifted towards the nasal so see in uh, exotropia what happens in exotropia this is these are the two eye and the eyeball has shifted outward uh, when you shine the torch what happens light would have right would be reflecting towards the nasal so it will stimulate the exotropia pseudo exotropia what happens in the uh, positive angle large positive angle uh, not large positive angle negative angle kappa negative angle kappa what happens we'll see uh, for example in eye myopia consider this as the eyeball and this is your uh, uh, anatomical axis and this this would have been the fovea and this is the visual axis uh, what happens in eye myopia there is a temporal overgrowth there is an exo anterior posterior overgrowth and as well as temporal overgrowth of the eyeball so what happens is if this was the real earlier eyeball there was a temporal overgrowth that will shift the that will shift the uh, the anatomical axis more temporally the anatomical axis would have shifted more temporally and the fovea would have shifted more nasally this is the fovea 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 would have shifted more nasally making the angle negative understood earlier the angle was positive here the angle becomes negative in this case what happens is the light tends to fall on the uh, temporal aspect of the cornea temporal aspect of the cornea even though the fovea would have shifted more nasally to the anatomical axis uh, but uh, light happens ulta it shifts more towards the uh, nasally now if you see now if you see here what happens uh, the light would have shifted here see the light would have shifted this is the fovea the light would have shifted more more temporally light reflex would have shifted see here more uh, temporally it gives an impression of isotropia in isotropia what happens in isotropia the eye would have shifted nasally when you shine the light the light reflex would be in the temporal side of the cornea so in this condition also the light the light reflex will be in the temporal temporal aspect of the central simulating isotropia or pseudo isotropia this you see in high myopia or pathological myopia understood Okay, that's for, that's all for this class, uh, pseudo-stabismus. Thank you. If any doubt, any correction, 
uh, please let me know in the comment section uh, kindly like share subscribe and click the bell icon for further notifications thank you